are What's Your Role in I Know That Voice. I'm the producer of I Know That Voice. And John DiMaggio? Yes, I'm the executive producer of I Know That Voice. And Lauren Shapiro? I'm the director and co-producer of I Know That Voice. And I'm very pleased to be here at San Diego Comic-Con 2013. Hooray! Larry and I were in Amsterdam working on a, on a thing that we do. We've done a bunch of times called Jam in the Dam and Music Festival. And music Festival, and I was emceeing it, and we were just I mean, he was shooting it. it. He was filming it, and I was you know seeing it. And we just, just we were just talking about it, and came up with the idea, and we were like, well, let's try something. And then we we worked on it for a little bit, tossed some ideas around, worked on it a little bit, shot some stuff, and we're like, oh, it's not really coming together. And I've worked with Tommy on a bunch of projects, a bunch of documentaries, and I was like, we need to, I was like, dude, we need to bring in Tommy. And Tommy was like, I'm all over this. This, is, this sounds like a great project. So that's pretty much how it started. Awesome. And how did you two know each other? Uh, well, we're all 15 year old friends. Oh. Yeah, 17 year olds. Yeah, Are you all yeah, from yeah. New Jersey? Or, uh, no, no, no. Thank God, no. Yeah, no. Hey, he's, I'm he's from Detroit. Detroit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. much better Detroit. He's from Detroit. Yeah. So he, 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 yeah, he, yeah. <laughs> He knows. He knows. He knows crime. Um, but uh, no, we all, we, live, we all in live, live in the same building in Hollywood. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so that's that's how we know each other. Yeah. We're all beginning. I, yeah. I will add that um, you know I was doing this music festival and then John got on board to do the emceeing of it. And one night in Amsterdam, um, Johnny started doing the voice of Bender, and these German tourists heard him and they don't even speak English. And so, and they still like recognized John's voice and fluttered over and they couldn't believe it was him. And I'd never seen someone get starstruck over a voice in a language they didn't even understand. And that kind of gave me a clue as to like how important uh, something like this is to cover. Okay, so um, what was the process for making the film? And um, you know, what did you both, what did you all find the most kind of interesting or challenging about making this film? The, the, the uh, process began with the genesis of the idea, and then taking shape into well, how do we get it actually into the system, and setting up interviews, and then having an end date where you, we know we're going to capture enough interviews of every section of the voiceover industry that we're happy with, go after the top and the best of that part of it, and then once we compiled all the interviews together, it was just literally chiseling, getting it down from three hours to two hours, two hours, and then constant notes and notes and notes, uh, where you're just constantly, you know, figuring out what's the best story to tell in 90 minutes or less, and that's where the final product came about, but it's a very long process when you're making a documentary, um, and uh, here we are 20 months later, and uh, we have a packed room with over 3,000 people in it. It's pretty exciting. Yeah, yeah that's a big you know, crowd. <laughs> I, think the, I think the biggest problem was the logistics of the of, of the project, just getting everybody gathered, you know, and, and getting the you know having that done. Because how many people are about again? 150. Yeah, over 150. 150. Right. Yeah, I, I will say that you know each person was like at least an hour long interview, and we had 150 people. So if you just give one minute to each person, just one great minute, you still have an extremely long movie. So it was pretty much like trying to choose between your children, like what to use and what not to use, because everything's, these people are brilliant people. And, uh, you know, it was just basically like trying to choose, use the best stuff that we could get to make the best movie possible. And now, of course, there are a lot of people in, you know, Hollywood and the industry. So how do you choose your um, your focus of which voice actors, because there's like movies and anime and animation? Well, you know, I think basically it was just like, all right, well, we need to get talent. We need to interview people. And it was just like, okay, well, who am I working with today? And I just asked them, and like, hey, man, I'm doing, this, I'm doing this documentary about voice. Do you want to be involved? And we would get we would get them. Once we got the ball rolling and we got like, yeah, once we got people interested in it and people started talking about it then that we had agents calling us yeah. the community really helped yeah the, us out. yeah the community definitely helped us out it was like and, that's, wildfire. And, and that's the and that's the thing about the people I work with it's like they're just they're the most giving most wonderful people the camaraderie involved in, 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 in my industry is is, is bar none. it's it's unbelievable how generous of time and talent folks are. That's one of the reasons why we made the film too, you know, just to showcase them. And, and, you know, and, that's, and that's an actual part of it. We talk about how there's an, ex we're used to like Hollywood, how people will backstab someone for a part or whatnot. And we noticed that in this industry, like people actually say, you know what, I could do this, but you know what would be better? Like John, you should give the job to John. 
or someone else. Or if like, I were all be like, Dee Bradley Baker needs to. They needs literally to refer to other people. You know, yeah, it's it, it's for real. You know? That's great. Okay, so now I know the internet and the rise of you know cons and everything like that. Voice actors are now actually known by their faces and everything. How did that? How has the celebrity experience changed? And you think that helped with you know what's going on you now? Know, I don't know. It's kind of funny because. You know, over, I mean, like, only down here do you get mobbed. Yeah. You know, only at a convention do you get mobbed where people know specifically what you do. Mm-hmm. You know, anywhere else. I mean, and in Amsterdam. And in Amsterdam. <laughs> yeah, in Amsterdam with German tourists, which freaked me out. Um, but, uh, you know, well, anything will freak you out in Amsterdam, really. So, you know. It's like a cartoon. <laughs> a living cartoon. But, yeah, living cartoon. But, I mean, you know, it doesn't really bother me. I didn't get into it to, you know, to have people. Oh my god, is that? I just love to work, you know. So that's and and that, you know, this is a perk. This is a perk of it, you know, having people be a fan of your work. I love it. I mean it's great. You know, and I'm I'm honored and I mean, you know, three thousand people in a room, you know, freaking out. I mean that's I mean it's incredible. I, I just I don't know, it's I just all I wanted to do was showcase it. And I think we did that. Yeah, I would say also if we wanted to kind of make the point that like you know, you kind of think it's gimmicky being, you know, a voice of something and all that, but I really think our film kind of shows that these people aren't so much voice actors as much as they're the best character actors you've ever seen in your life. It just happens to be you've only heard them through their voices. Thanks, Larry. No problem, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Promotion. <laughs> Um, so, so obviously, you know, obviously people who are already fans are going to watch this. Do you think you're going to draw in a new crowd of people doing this documentary? I think, you know what, word of mouth will get around. Um, I think people will be excited about it. Um, and, and I think, like I said before, like, you know, people love cartoons. People love cartoons. And, and, and I think that, I think that... That's something I have. Well, I'm like the perfect example of like the audience. Right? That's what I was that. So, so basically, I like cartoons growing up as a kid, and then took a hiatus of them, and then The Simpsons brought, kind of brought me back in there, but not knowing what goes on behind the scenes. Now, actually making this movie, now I know everything that goes on behind the scenes. Oh, it is the next panel. Yeah, South Park panel. Oh, I didn't even know. Oh my God, oh my God. So, so do you think the documentary is also going to be like for people who want to be voice actors? Do you think it's going to be a great? Person it's going to be it's going to be a video bible for them. I was, I was it's very it educational. Like. It's like it's a very educational, class. very uh, entertaining at the same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of laughs. And now this one is for you as someone who is already a seasoned voice actor. What yeah. new things did you learn? Something new about your own profession? Did you pick something up? I mean. Furniture. Yeah, don't, don't move my furniture. <laughs> Larry came into my house and uh, yeah, I tried to move my furniture around there. My interview. Don't don't look move, so much better. Don't move you. my goddamn furniture. <laughs> Larry, get off my furniture. The scratches are gonna come out. Okay, God so damn it! Go. Don't ever touch. Don't ever touch. Don't, don't ever touch. Don't ever touch very picky about his furniture. Shit, it's it's, it's there for a reason. That's right. Uh, damn can it! You, can you say that like Tracy Morgan? I'm telling you, that shit is there for a reason. <laughs> you can't be moving my sculptures around. Shit. That's fantastic. I'm telling you right now. And. Uh, Last bit, uh, coolest experience each of you had making the documentary. Pick anything or maybe do. Um, probably going to Big Bear Lake and going into Mel Blank's house and interviewing his son, Mel Blank, about Mel Blank and listening to how he came out of a coma. Um, Bugs Bunny has stopped slapping his hands. Um, seeing the finished product. That was that was that was thrilling. And, and being here and seeing everybody here for it. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I mean, honestly, I would say all the interviews, there's so many people I wouldn't want to single anyone out, but I will say that actually going into certain Futurama uh, sessions and getting to see John actually perform with some of the cast members and just getting to see that happen organically, for me, it was probably one of the biggest treats. That's awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for your time.